What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today I have a very special video for you and that is the construction of my new reptile room. In the process of this video, we did everything from put up the walls, to put in the floors, to bring in the snake racks, move, move the snakes. We did it all. This is documenting my move from Boston to Connecticut. It was a lot of work and it does not really show in this video, but maybe you'll hear in my voice and see in my eyes how tired I am in the process. I literally poured my blood, sweat, and tears into this new snake room. So I hope you guys enjoy. Before we get into the video, I'm gonna show off this little girl here. She is a Pearl Burmese Python, really awesome snake. I've had her for a while and if she isn't my favorite, she's certainly one of my favorite Burmese Pythons that I have. If you're just here for the Rust-Oleum floor piece of this, go to about minute four and a half, five. That's where that piece is gonna kick off. That's what I put in these floors, Rust-Oleum rock solid floors. You'll see my whole analysis on them from start to finish, also installing. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. We are moving, so I'm building a new reptile room here. Um, all around me, behind me, you can see this is the, the room that we're gonna be moving into. So I'm gonna try to do a time lapse of this. We're gonna have some cool stuff going on. I'm gonna be doing from framing the walls to painting the floors, getting this stuff all set up. If I can, I'm gonna try to also do the process of moving the reptiles, which I'm not looking forward to. Uh, I'm gonna kind of put them in some bins, so we'll see how that goes. It's, uh, it's gonna be a process. So I'm gonna do a quick kind of walk through of the room. You guys can see what the layout's gonna be. Then I'm gonna hopefully gonna show you guys the finished product by the time this video goes up. So let's go from here. This is the start of the room here. Uh, I'm gonna put a doorway in like this. We're gonna have our utility tub so we can do our bowls and wash things. Uh, there's my sink hookup. No toilet's gonna be in this room, so I'm probably gonna cover that with the sink. It's gonna wrap around. Uh, and this is gonna be the bulk of the room. Uh, you can see there's a separate entrance there. There'll be another doorway, uh, so you can walk in right from that door. These walls here will be framed. This would be my room. And I'm gonna do this so it's basically a straight shot. I mean, this is kind of what we're working with. It's about uh, 35 feet long and 18 feet wide. So let's get it, let's see how this goes. We started some of this, we got, got one wall almost laid out. I got Stanley over there in the corner. Helping out, we get some lights. Uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Work in progress. Plumber's coming soon for the sink. Day one is over. We get the sink in. Got a couple walls framed up. We're gonna put a big door there. Uh, little room that goes back there. Have some electrical up in the ceiling. And uh, it's coming together, so today or tomorrow we're going to put in some drywall and put in some doors and then hopefully that'll that'll be it for the next couple days give it a little break then we're going to work on the floors all right guys it's the end of day 2 and we're getting there it's been a lot of work my buddy stanley came up and he's been really killing it helping me do the walls do the drywall put some plaster do all kinds of stuff in here so we'll do kind of flip this around We'll do a walkthrough and uh, I'll show you where the progress is to date. A lot of work. This is where we currently stand. We have drywall up. We got the sink in. And we are going to rough in the doors. We were going to put the doors in today, but had to return one. I actually, coming down the steps, I was carrying it myself went down hard and the door went with it. So had to go exchange one door for a new one. I think right now this is, it's really starting to come together. Uh, we're gonna pretty much again have racks on this wall here. It's a 30, 34 foot, 35 foot long wall. Then we're gonna have uh, some racks there. All these walls are gonna be insulated with that polystyrene stuff. Like I think I said in the beginning, then this is gonna be another rack wall. So have plenty of power going up here. I think I showed you about every every maybe five or six feet there is an outlet. So I got ten outlets there, a whole bunch up in the ceiling. These things are all on their own breakers, so we got plenty of power. That's what I was really concerned with. Then we have more more outlets going up over here. You can see those wires hanging down. So we'll see. Um, I think I'm going to take tomorrow off, resume again in a couple days. 
And I gotta cut some heat into that duct work. We're getting there. All right guys, it is almost the end of day three. We are making really good progress. I have a little bit more to do. Stanley came by today. We finished the drywall on the other side. We mudded coated the walls. Um, I epoxied the floor. I didn't epoxy the floor. I put down the crack filler last night and I grinded the floor today. And uh, we did a couple other things, little things, cut off some of the clean outs. I'll flip the camera around again, show you what we did. Next step for me, Stanley just took off, huge help, is I am going to wash and etch the floors and prepare it for the Rust-Oleum, the rock solid uh, floor coating, polycaramine coating. I'm probably gonna do a time lapse for that. I might make it a separate video or I might stuff it in here. We'll see how this goes. So uh, I'm gonna flip it around, we'll see what happens. So here's our room. I did forget to mention the doors were in, so we put those doors in. As you can see, the cracks in the floor, they're all filled. I grinded those down. Sinks in, still have, uh, we did the mud and coat on the walls, have to do a second coat. Uh, doors again, doors are in. This is the room, it's really starting to come together. Just to kind of show you, I'm sure you can see in the time lapse video, but this is the room before we added all the new lights. These, uh, I think, are the Barina lights. I got them on Amazon. They were the eight foot lights. But this is what we were working with before the lights. So huge, huge difference. Uh, these currently, they just had a couple, you know, incandescent bulbs. And then we'll kind of pop them on. What a difference. Yes. So that's what we have going on. We have this little sump in the corner. Again, grinded all the cracks. And I'm going to clean the floor now. So we'll see how that goes. So the floors are clean, and now we're gonna start the acid etch. I'm gonna do a disclaimer that I have never done this before, so I don't know if this is gonna come out good, bad. This is my house, not yours, so don't blame me if uh, this isn't the way to do it. If I do it wrong, I do it wrong, it's okay. The floor doesn't have to be perfect, I just want it to be a little better than it is now, so I can clean it, mop it, do things like that. I hope it's gonna turn out okay. I have uh, a couple kits, I'll show you those kits, and we're gonna start the etch. So this is that, uh, the stuff I bought, the Rust-Oleum, uh, rock solid, this is the dark gray. It comes with all kinds of stuff in the kit, I'm not going to go through that, but uh, it comes with these little acid etch kits. This basement is about 700 square feet, a little bit over, under. This kit says it does 450 to 500 square feet. I bought three of them because I want a nice thick coat on here. They were like 250 a piece or 213 a piece. Uh, but in terms of why I wanted to do the square footage is that I guess essentially each kit comes with two etch kits So that should in theory do about 500 square feet. So I'm going to use three. I might use the fourth one It says that you're going to fill up a watering can like this about one gallon With the etch kit sprayed on the floor. It does say to pre-wet the floor. So I have my hose here I'm going to Rinse the floor down a little bit. I'm gonna use my shop vac to suck up the water. Unfortunately, we're in the basement. If this were a garage, you could just blow it out into your, into your yard. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna do the time lapse on this again. So go from here. lot of work. Um, I think it was definitely a necessary step. The floor looks amazing just as it is all clean. So the etching was definitely a necessary step. It was a very difficult step for such a large size room. Uh, put a lot of work into it, but I think it was worth it. I'm looking at the floor now. It's so nice and clean. I mean, even the floor just as it is now would be better, way better than what it was. It's just a really nice, clean, uh, clean cement floor right now. So I'm going to flip the camera around. This is the end of day three, four. I lost track of the days, but it's the end of these days. I'm gonna do the epoxy floor, the polycaramine floor in the morning. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight, then I'm gonna do that in the morning. So I'm flipping around, see what it looks like. The floor is drying right now, and 
I mean, it just looks so much better. There was just kind of red staining and stuff all over the place. I think once it's dry, it's gonna look really perfect. I do think that some of these cracks are gonna show through the polycaramine, but I am just out of time at this point. I need to get the floor down because the snakes are coming in soon. So I'm just gonna have to deal with it. It's not gonna be perfect, but I think it's still gonna look really good. And for functionality, that's really the main purpose of putting this floor down is I want something that's really easy to clean. And I think this is gonna give it to me. So this is what we got. Good morning everybody, it is day four and we're about to do the paint on the floor. The floor is completely dry now, next day from doing the, the etching. It looks really good as it is right now. Uh, as I mentioned, there are gonna be some imperfections in the floor, there's some cracks that run through it. I filled them the best I could. If I had another week or so, or another couple days, I would have probably done a better job refilling the cracks because as I put it in, some of the cement that was poured in there settled into the crack a little bit. So there's still going to be some imperfections, but for what it is, it's good. Uh, I guess I'm going to do a time lapse again. We'll see how it goes. So basically the directions say mix the pouch, shake it back and forth, uh, roll part A into part B. There's all kinds of videos on that just made by Rust-Oleum. So if you're putting this stuff on your floor, go check that out. It's, uh, I think Rust-Oleum has pretty good videos, at least from what I understand. Um, I do think the etching, I think I said it last night, but the etching was an important part of the floor. As, as, times, as, as, as much of a pain as it was, it was really good to understand how the floor works. I could figure out where the low spots were, where the water was pooling, and it really helped me understand the floor. So I don't know if that's helpful to you guys, but for me, it was very helpful where I'm gonna have you know hoses going, there's gonna be water on the floor. It's good to understand where the floor uh, has those low spots and where the water might pool. I'm not sure how this Rust-Oleum stuff will react to that, where it's not level. I think this is semi self-leveling, so I might have some barer spots and some thicker coats, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna put this stuff down. I'm gonna leave it pretty much overnight for a couple days. I have to go back to Massachusetts and uh, not gonna be able to see how this goes. So in a few days, once it's all dry, I'll do kind of a recap video once it's, once it's wet. Then once it's all dry, I'll do another video. I did decide I am gonna use the flakes. I was going back and forth for a while and I think the flakes are gonna just add that texture that um, when, I, when this floor does get wet, I'm not gonna kill myself and slip and fall. So if I don't like them, I can always do the top coat. I think I'm gonna be stuck with the flakes for good, but I think they'll look okay for what it is. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll do the time lapse. We're gonna flip it around and see what happens. And man, I gotta say the floors is probably the best and worst part of the whole project. I can't walk on it right now, so I'll try to take some video from the doorways. But um, man, what a lot of work the floors are to do. I kind of instantly regretted throwing the flakes on the floor as soon as I threw them on. But um, now that I actually have them all on, I really like the way they look. So I'm happy I did it. I do hope they'll give some traction. There's gonna be some thin spots in the floors. I know there are because the kit says it does 450 to 500 square feet. There is no way under any condition, under any floor, unless you're stretching this stuff so thin, it's gonna look like crap, that you're gonna get that coverage. So all the reviews that I saw saying that you need to basically double it, I would say double it and then go a little bit more if you really want a nice looking floor. Um, I doubled it and went a little bit more and I kind of got nervous halfway through thinking that I wasn't going to get it. So unfortunately, I do think that like the middle of the floor, the part that's going to count is going to be a little bit thin. I can see it already, um, but I think it might, it should still look okay. Uh, but I can see, you know, some of the corners of the floor where I started, I put it on nice and thick, like the direction said to do. 
it's just this really nice glossy coat over it. And then some spots where I stretched it a little bit just because I was getting nervous for coverage, it was getting uh, a little bit kind of, you can see the grains through. So we'll see how it dries. I may be surprised when it dries. I think it's going to be pretty similar. I may even need to coat it with another coat in a couple of these locations. So we'll see how it goes. I think right now, overall, I'm really happy with it. I do think, again, if you're going to buy this product and think you're going to get what the directions say, uh, you're going to be very disappointed. This does need a lot more than it says. Maybe if I put a clear coat on top, which I may do on some of those thin areas, it'll glaze it out a little bit. I think the clear coat's a little bit cheaper, but I wasn't planning on doing that. Again, if you guys are following the whole video, and not just this Rust-Oleum piece. I'm kind of out of time. I don't have time to, to wait to put another clear coat. I need to get things moved in here. So I'm gonna show you the room. It does, I was a little nervous again too. I've heard reviews of it dries patchy. Um, and you can see where they each kit. It does look like they color match pretty good on this. So I'll flip it around and show you guys what we're working with. Okay, so this is the floor with what we have right now. I think it looks really good. Uh, I'll zoom into a couple of the spots that I think are gonna dry a little funny. But overall, let's see if I can get you guys around the corner here. Overall, I think it's looking really nice. So this is the spot where I went on the thickest. And you can actually see, I uh, did mention uh, the colors. You can see right here, there's a little bit of swirling where the two kits met. But this was also the only spot where I went on really thick. So you can kind of see this here. So there's a little discrepancies between the floor, but it's, it's still pretty good. Let me see if you guys can catch that. I'll zoom in. So you can see right there, it's a little bit showing through. And then I did that kind of on the other spot. So you can kind of see where I think it's going to start to show through. But overall, really like the way this looks. And again, I was nervous about the flakes. I didn't really like them to start, but I do think I needed the traction. Uh, and I really like them now that the whole floor is done with it, which I'm very happy about because they're down and I can't really cover them up at this point. So now that I'm looking at the floor over here, I do think, you know, there will be some little color differences you can kind of see there, but it's so small. I mean, I'm looking for that and it may just be how it's drying right now. I did notice that as it was drying, the color was changing. I'll go over the other doorway and show you what that looks like. So we're in the other doorway and this is what I'm talking about with the colors. As I was, as it was drying, uh, I do think that that's going to blend much better than it's showing right there. Uh, and overall, again, I do like these flakes. I'm actually really happy with them, but uh, this is kind of see these are some of the thin spots that I said I figure those are probably going to show through but but who knows I started to stretch it thin the kits that I had were supposed to cover about 1500 square feet plus or minus or so I bought three of the two car garage kits There's no way that that would cover any one car garage or or uh, what it says to do in the direction. So this is the room it's Best that I can get it put the camera on the corner and I'm really happy. I'm actually disappointed. I'm gonna have pink foam board up on the perimeter, but it's just gonna work for functionality. So those are the floors. After all that work, I'm very happy with them. I'm very happy I didn't cheap out and just do the $30 a gallon paint like I did in my other room. I think this is gonna hold up pretty good. So we'll see if I'm still happy with it when it dries tomorrow. We're here 48 hours later. Uh, I did the floor on Sunday. It is now Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night. So this floor has been carrying for at least 48 hours plus. Um, I'm really curious to see what this is gonna look like. So I haven't looked at this yet. I'm gonna turn the camera around. We can walk right into the room and see what it all looks like. I hope it works well. I have heard that when this stuff dries, it soaks into the floor. So let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna spin this around and we'll take a look. So far, so good. Wow, it looks wet, it's amazing. Oh man, this looks awesome. So there's definitely some bearer spots, some spots that soaked in, uh, but overall the flow looks really, really good. You know, like this spot here is definitely, this is nice and thick, but then over here you can see there's some, some cement showing through but I think it's going to do exactly what I need it to do. So this is it 48 hours later. Looks awesome. All right, next step is we're going to put up the insulation around the perimeter. 
again, I really don't even want to do that because it's going to kind of look like crap, but uh, we need to do it. We need to keep this place warm. So I'm going to do a time lapse. We'll check that out. <laughs> Halfway through and it looks like my battery ran out in the middle of the time lapse so you guys got about halfway uh, I didn't have another battery on, on me so I had to just charge it up and uh, yeah I'll kind of turn the camera around show you what we got we still need a little bit more and some of the smaller cuts but I think overall the room is almost together it's starting to get a little bit warm I cut a heat vent into my duct so we are getting some heat down here and uh, I do need to cut a couple more. It's getting late. I need to get out of here because I got to go to work in the morning. So I'm going to flip the camera around, show you guys what we're working with, and we'll see uh, next time. Next time we go on this video, the snakes will be coming in. We have the insulation board mostly up. I do need to cut a small strip for the entire perimeter around the top. I covered up that window, but depending on what I, what I think of, I, you know, I may cut that piece out. I really just wanted to focus on keeping the heat in this room. So with the exception of that small strip up there, I have a few pieces around here I need to cut. Uh, this kind of, this little section over there where the sink is, but there's not going to be any snakes there right away, so I'm not too concerned with that, and I need to cut this little strip up. But for the most part, we're, we're pretty done. I mean, the room's looking really nice. I may consider painting that foam board at one point, but there's going to be cages in front of it, and for right now, it's looking good enough. I still need to put another coat of, of mud on the walls and eventually paint it, uh, put, the, put the plate covers on, but for the most part, we're pretty done. Um, I did cut this vent up in the ceiling. I can already feel the heat cranking on that. It's actually reassuring because it was getting a little cold down here. I was worried. I'm going to cut two more. I'm going to cut one about, you know, maybe eight feet over from there and another one about eight feet over. So we're gonna get some heat in this room, uh, but just kind of standing here, I did that about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes ago, and it's already starting to warm up. So that's really good to see. So completed room. This is kind of the last walkthrough before we get some snakes in it. As I mentioned, electrical on the ceiling, there's plenty of power. So these three, basically every three go on their own breaker. So I got plenty of power. I won't be popping breakers. These guys right up in the middle of the ceiling are for shop backs and things like that and then I have another set that runs behind here so my goal is to have cages on this side of the wall you can kind of see them there they are um, all in their own breaker I did put a couple down you know knee height for little things low to the ground a um, couple up here in the ceiling and overall we're almost ready it is the day before moving day and I'm not looking forward today. This is a day that for probably the past month and a half, I've been absolutely dreading. It's essentially getting all the snakes ready to move. So I'm gonna kind of turn the camera around. It's a complete mess down here. Show you what I've been doing. I've been essentially fasting the snakes for the past couple weeks. This way they are all uh, kind of have their stomachs emptied. And in theory, what I'm going to be doing last night, I pulled all the water bowls, dumped them, they're soaking in bleach. So I'm going to clean all those today and kind of put them, pack them in their own box. The next step is I'm going to take all the snakes. I'm going to move them into uh, bags or bins. I don't know if I'm going to be able to document that process. I think I have just too much to do in one day to do that and also worry about the video. But I'm going to try to take some videos interim and, and show you the process of how it's happening. Uh, so let me flip this camera around and I'll kind of show you the rest of what's going on. This is what we're working with uh, right now. 
I have my racks on this wall. I have my racks here. Got my little Freedom Breeder shaker table. And I got my racks on this side. And then, you know, I have a few more in this room there, my babies, and some in this room here. So, again, things are a complete mess right now, not representative of what this normally looks like, but uh, it is what it is. I have my water bowls that are all pulled, soaking in bleach, so all the cages are empty. Throughout today, I'm going to be pulling the snakes out of the cages, dumping the substrate, cleaning the bin, and the, each snake will then go into a bag that's going to go into a bin like this. Uh, so this bin, you know, not this exact one, but something like that, maybe the one below it, is might have you know every snake from this whole rack uh or at least one side of that rack so i'm thinking you know one two three four five six so each one of these will have will be in a bin i'll have six bins to manage this rack um same thing here you know one bin for that rack one bin for that rack um and so forth so i have all my racks labeled so this is you know rack see if i can get that to focus C1, you know, C2, C3, and all my bins are labeled, C1 through however many bins are on the bottom. Uh, that's how I'm gonna label the bags, is each snake is gonna go into a bag or a, a container. That bag or container is gonna have the associated number with it. It's just easier than trying to remember where everything goes. This way, everything goes back the way it came out. Um, once all the snakes are bagged, I'm going to have to start cutting my power strips and thermostats off, cleaning the racks, pulling out the heat panels. It's just going to be a really long day today. So I'm not looking forward to today. Uh, I am going to then take all these bins. This whole room is pretty warm, but I'm going to then take all these bins and put them in one of my bathrooms upstairs that I currently have a space heater going. So I feel like that's a room that the movers should not have any reason to really go into once uh you know once they initially come in the house uh once they come in and start moving these racks i did hire movers to do it it's just uh they're going to be in for a treat when they see this but they should come apart and move pretty easily and uh, i figure that's one room of the house that i can keep consistent temperature uh once they start moving the doors are going to be open in this place and there's going to be no way i'm going to maintain temperatures so in theory out this door uh, i think i'm going to have them reverse stack so again kind of the top you know you have your your d1 i'm not sure why my camera is terrible on focusing the past couple days but uh, our h1 h2 in theory the top rack will then be on the bottom in the moving truck so that when they take this out the bottom rack will be on the top and they can just reverse stack them in place in my head that's how it's going to work we'll see how the movers do i have my miscellaneous bowls and things like that um, all ready to go so I'm going to try to document this throughout the day, but again, it's just a lot to really manage for me, just one person doing this. So we'll see how it goes. It has been a very long day. So I was lucky enough. My wife came down. She helped me. We're finally through. We started this when I first did that initial recording earlier today. It was about 8 a.m. It's, um, it's at 12.35 a.m., so p.m. So the next day. Uh, we got it all done. We did a full cage clean. I was going to be lazy and just kind of move the snakes into bins. I want to take you upstairs and show you what I have set up right there. It's essentially a space heater in the room. It's nice and warm. Biggest concern is I have a whole bunch of pregnant female boas and they need to stay 86-ish. So they can dip down a little bit lower than that for a while, but Eventually it's going to catch up to them and I don't want to hurt the babies. Some of them are pretty far along They're like a month away from from dropping babies. So I don't want to risk that so they're nice and warm up in that room I'll go show you that I want to flip the camera around show you what we have going on over here What a long day and I am going to try to take you guys around uh, With the movers uh, the movers don't they kind of know what they're coming into at least the guy who I initially spoke to he did a video chat with me. I showed him what I had. I showed him how these racks come apart. He felt confident his guys were there, but I don't know if he's going to tell his guys what they're actually going to be walking into. So we'll see if I can pick up the camera and take you guys around. I'll do that, but I need to stay focused on them moving because they're not cheap and I want to make sure that this goes smoothly. So we'll see. I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to show you guys what we have going on here. All the cages clean and empty. And then I'm going to show you upstairs in my bathroom right now it's just a kind of a makeshift uh, snake room.
This is what we have. All the cages empty and clean. And I'm hoping that they're going to dry out a little bit before tomorrow. But they uh, are all empty and clean. I labeled all these bins. Let's see if we can, like I said, you know, E6. So all the bags have numbers on them. I pulled my freezer out. The place is just a total mess right now. But it's coming together. So I'm excited for tomorrow. I really want to see. Apologize for the shaky camera. I'm walking around. It, I'm tired. So I'm going to go up, show you guys that, take a shower, and call it a night. Because right now everything is a mess. I have about 20 bags of cocoa block bedding outside that I'll be throwing away that were from all the cages. I have a dumpster coming tomorrow as well to get rid of all this stuff. But till then, I'm going to take you guys upstairs, show you the snakes, go from there. So before I completely called it a night, I wanted to show you the uh, snakes, how I have them set up. It's amazing how heavy some of these bins are. I have all my pregnant females over here. Uh, space heater running. So that's uh, 87, 86 degrees, which is perfect for the pregnant females. I need to make sure that they don't drop too cold. They have some... I probably have 10 or 15 females in there and I don't want them to lose their babies. So this room, nice and warm. They're going to stay in here for the night. They're all in bags like I kind of showed you. This is I4, I5 and 6, you know, J2 and 3. This is just how I labeled them and then in each one of these. So that one is J4 and J6. There's two bags in there, J4 and J6. They're labeled up nice. A lot of work, but uh, it went exactly how it, I needed it to. So we'll see how it goes. Well, we've had a long day um, driving to the new place in Connecticut. As you can see, I have uh, snakes behind me, watching the road and the camera at the same time. Um, it's been a long day. We had uh, three movers, or, I'm sorry, three moving trucks. They actually had to bring in another mover, so a fifth mover. We had five movers, three trucks, a um, lot of stuff. It's They started at about 8.30. They left my house at about 3.30. We're about an hour into the drive. They said they're going to stop and get something to eat. Uh, I'm going to be having another really long night putting all this stuff away, but I'm hoping that by the end of today uh, or tomorrow morning, I'll be able to have all these snakes unloaded, at least the pregnant ones. So I have the pregnant ones with me. Uh, my father is actually behind me with another uh, truckload of snakes. So I figured give me the, the, the sensitive stuff and then my father can take the stuff in case he opens the window or does something like that that, that I wouldn't normally do. So it's hot in here. Um, I don't have any time to really document the whole moving process, but the movers are definitely not happy. Um, but they got it done. So their paycheck, they'll be happy. And uh, yeah, so we'll catch you tomorrow or later tonight with the snake racks all set up. We're all moved in for the most part. It's, uh, it was a really late night last night. The guys showed up at my house about eight in the morning. Uh, they ended up having three trucks of stuff, um, including one for my house, two trucks with the snake. Uh, long, long day. We didn't get finished here until about midnight and I was just exhausted. It's actually probably about one in the morning. Um, I was exhausted after having the day we had before. So as you can see behind me, there are rocks all over the place. I need to now set up the heat panels. The snakes are now in the bathroom upstairs in pillowcases. I need to get them out because I have pregnant females that need the that need to be able to thermoregulate better. Right now the whole room is at about 86 to 90 degrees, so I'm hoping they should be fine. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to turn this camera off. I'm going to start doing some of these racks here. We are finally here, so the move is over. It has been longer than I thought since this video. I'm going to kind of do a breakdown after this, tell you some reasons why. I'm going to do a little walk through the room. But the room is getting there. We're almost there. It's still a little bit of a mess. I'm still setting up. It's about a week after move day. Cages are set up. I'm going to do a quick little walk through, show you what's going on over here, then tell you about how the whole thing went. Some unfortunate stuff happened, but there's nothing I can do now. Hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes and uh, yeah, I'll flip it. You guys can see what we have going on. Here we are. We have all the racks in place for the most part. Uh, we still need to do some finishing touches on the room. We need to you know, throw some more mud and stuff like that on the wall, throw some paint up. But for the most part, 
everything is kind of set up and going as it should. I do need to still finish the insulation. Got my freezers in place, some bins. It's still a little bit of a mess, but we're uh, we're almost there. We're 85% of the way there. Uh, do some laundry with some of the snake bags, but this is what we have. I'm really, really happy with it. All my racks go up. Each thermostat goes into its own outlet, so there's plenty of power, which is awesome. Did not have that in the other place. Again, need to finish off some of the insulation, some of the paint, just make it look look a little bit nicer, but the room is really functioning exactly how it should. The floors are awesome. I've been in here for about a week, like I said. Um, so yeah, so let's flip it and let's talk about it here. Welcome to potentially the new view of Jason's Exotic Reptiles. So I really appreciate everybody who watched this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the clips of it. Um, towards the end it did not go as I planned and that's what we're going to talk about right here and I hope you guys can learn from my mistakes. So the room itself, absolutely amazing. I mean, if I could do it all over again exactly the way it is, I would do it all over again exactly the way it is. The room, the floors, the, the insulation, I mean this room is exactly what, I'm, what I need. It's the fans going, it's blowing in the middle of the room, moving the air around, it's 78. 79 degrees in here. It's humid. It's it's really perfect. I mean it is Everything that I needed and wanted it has tons of electrical tons of light uh, it, It's just perfect. So with that said those of you guys who watched kind of the tail end of the clip uh, I did have some unfortunate stuff happen. It really It took me about a week maybe a week and a half to where this video is till I could even really get my mind into doing a video so during the move, I think the last clip I showed before I just showed this whole room was the me moving the snakes in the vehicles. So everything went fantastic up until that point. So Thursday night, a Thursday all day, we were packing up snakes, my wife and I, cleaning out the cages. Everything went into my bathroom upstairs, had a space heater, it was all running great, checked temperatures every couple hours. Everything went as good as it could have gone and probably better. Movers came. That's kind of where we hit some hiccups. Is the movers took quite a bit of time. Um, they were there. They showed up about eight in the morning. We didn't actually get everything moved into the house and finished until probably about 1:30 in the morning. At that point, I've only had a couple hours of sleep because we've been going for a few days now. I ended up putting the snakes. They moved to the bathroom. All throughout the whole moving, we were checking the temps. Everything was great. Had a space heater going, perfect, perfect, perfect the whole time. 1.30 in the morning, I said, I just don't have it in me to set up all the racks. That's another five, six hours worth of work that I just can't do right now. We were just mentally done. We went to bed, closed all the doors and windows from the movers. Everything was good except the heat in my house went into overdrive at that point to try to make up for the temperature difference that it had once all the doors and windows were open. Um, I didn't account for that. So when I went to bed, I checked all the temperatures of all the bins, everything was you know, 84, 85 degrees to some of the more sensitive stuff or cooler stuff that was down in the uh, you know, mid to mid eight, low 80s to high 70s, mid 70s for, for some of the other things. So woke up in the morning, shot the temperature of the bin. It's probably about six o'clock been closest to the space heater 100 degrees next one 99 degrees 100 degrees 100 degrees so all these bins that were close to the space heater uh, essentially got really really hot I started to get a little nervous at that point we rushed to get the rack set up you know I clicked off the heat rushed to get the rack set up I don't know what happened over the course of the night as we started unloading the snakes maybe woke up eight o'clock by the time we were done setting up the racks probably 11 30 noon time started bringing them down opened up some of them and animal didn't make it wasn't the whole bin it was just a couple animals in that bin didn't make it a couple animals in that bin didn't make it um and honestly i just completely broke down it was opening up bin after bin after bin after bin after bin of animals that I've had for a very long time um, 
they didn't make it. Again, it took me probably about a week and a half, a week, till I could actually sit down and make this video. It, it really crushed me. Um, I mean, I just totally broke down. I had to have my wife finish. I couldn't, couldn't watch it. Uh, these weren't, it wasn't anything about the money. It was, you know, some of these were my, my corn snakes. You know, things that I just showed off in a video saying that these are my pets. These are just cool animals. You know, it had nothing to do with money. Of course, I also had some of the most expensive stuff, some of the most delicate stuff, uh, closest to the heat source. Um, so that stuff didn't make it either. Uh, a lot of my Peruvian stuff didn't make it. So it was, it was pretty crushing for that to happen. Uh, and it, it really sucked. With that said, we finished. Uh, there was nothing I could do at that point other than unpack the animals as quickly as I could and see where we stood at the end of it. Fortunately, a lot of animals did make it, uh, but it was, it was a pretty big loss and it really, after so much hard work, you know, weeks of hard work and no sleep and, and just pouring everything into this, getting everything ready so it went perfectly, that little, you know, I keep thinking, and there is nothing I could have done differently but that little I'm too tired I need to go to bed and get a couple hours of sleep before I do this if I didn't do that maybe everything would have been fine I don't know I checked all the animals again every three four hours two three hours I was in those bins making sure everything was good it was just that one little last piece of the puzzle last piece of the process I kinda let everything down a little bit um, but again we're here there's nothing I can do about it at this point. Beautiful animals did make it. It's really unfortunate. It kills me, some of these animals that, that I lost. It, it really did, and I didn't think it was going to. But from that standpoint, it did make me reappreciate a lot of the stuff that I have going on here, a lot of the animals that I have, and it kind of reassured me that I was in it for the right reason. The last thing on my mind was how much money was lost. And it's funny because first couple people who I told about this they're saying oh man how much money and I didn't even think about it it wasn't even a thought in my head I still haven't really even thought about it it was more that animal I really liked that animal I really cared for that animal I spent a lot of time raising that animal uh, some of these animals were with me 15 16 years plus um, I mean old stuff that I've had for a very long time and I think that as I was unpacking again one, two, three. Once I started to continue to open up bin after bin after bin, that's when it really crushed me. Um, and I just, I just had to walk out. I couldn't do it. Um, it really sucked. So I don't mean to end this video on a negative note to make it a little bit more positive and kind of turn it around from there. I know that what I have going on is going to thrive in this room. I know that uh, the breeding years are going to get better. I hope you guys can learn from my mistake of that, of stupid mistake. I was tired. I wasn't thinking at 1.30 in the morning after being up for, you know, almost 48 hours with very little sleep that once I close all the doors and windows, the heat vent in the bathroom is going to continue to kick on and raise the temperature of that space heater in that whole room. So, unfortunately it happened, but we're in the new setup. It is... A fantastic room I can't wait to see how the next upcoming years are gonna be I'm close to local local rat breeders I can get an abundant supply of rats and it's really if anything super motivated me to really step up everything that I can uh, even more so so I always felt like I tried to keep things in high standards and I really want to do even better now so I appreciate you guys watching this whole video. Before I close this, I am going to do one little final walkthrough, slowly show you what we have going on here. Um, show, you, show off this little guy. This is a little male moon glow. If all goes well, we'll be getting some babies from him this year. Uh, I don't know what we'll get. It was kind of proven out a hypo female that was sold to me as Het Snow, uh, but or Het Moon Glow, but we'll see what happens. So with that said, I'm going to flip it give you one last glimpse of the room. I appreciate you guys watching, taking the time to check out this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave me some comments in the comments section. And until next week, I'm going to try to make these videos more. Life is more usual. So until next week, we'll catch you then. Thanks guys.